What is up guys, Veos here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking in-depth production basics on compressors. We're going to be talking about what a compressor is, how and why you might want to use them, and I'll be giving a bunch of tips as well. Okay, first of all, what is a compressor and why should you use them? A compressor is an audio tool to control the dynamic range of a sound. Have you ever watched a movie late at night, some parts were too quiet and some were way too loud so you, you were controlling the volume the whole time? Uh, well compression is a little bit like that, it's automatic gain control but you have to tell it what to do. Let's listen to a quick extreme example of compression. So the first is uncompressed and it's a drum loop so take a listen. That's the compressed version. Okay, so as you could tell, the second one was kind of squashed and that was on purpose. Um, but yeah, basically that's what compression can do in extreme cases. What is dynamic range or dynamics? In a sound recording, dynamic range is the relationship between the loudest and the quietest volume. As you can see here, this is a very dynamic signal because this is the loudest peak and this is the quietest. So it's actually quite a big difference. Why would you want to control dynamics? Well, dynamics can easily become a problem. Sounds can be too quiet in one part of the song and too loud in another, and or, uh, and a sound can have too many peaks or not enough. Okay, let's talk about how to use a compressor. So you have multiple parameters. First, the threshold, input. Second, the ratio, attack, release, output. We're going to be talking about all of those individually and I'll be going into Ableton to show you guys examples. So first of all, the threshold. This is the crossover point. Anything that goes above this point will be compressed, reduced in volume by the ratio. So notice how right now there's no actual gain reduction happening. But as I turn this threshold down, uh, gain reduction will start happening and that's at a rate dictated by the ratio. So let's take a listen here. Okay, let's talk about the ratio now. So the ratio functions as the intensity of the compression. It's kind of like an in-out comparison. For example, in the case of 8 to 1, for every 8 decibels the signal goes over the threshold, the output will only be reduced to 1 decibel, as you can see in the image right here. So this is 8 decibels and this is 1 decibel right here. A higher ratio will be more intense and more audible. Okay, so let's start at a ratio of 2 to 1. I'm slowly going to put the ratio up so you're going to hear the effects of it and makeup gain is on so it's going to stay at a pretty consistent volume. So the higher ratio, the more it's going to act like a limiter. Okay, let's talk about the attack now. The function of the attack is to shape the transient of the sound, aka more or less punch. The attack is basically how long in milliseconds it will take for the compressor to fully kick in. This is how you can emphasize or reduce a transient or the beginning click in a sound. Uh, for example, in, in this case, uh, the dubstep snare transients are roughly uh, 90 milliseconds long, and it's just this little you know, click at the beginning of the snare. This is the tom and this is the tail kind of noisy thing. If you want to see what you can actually do with the attack, uh, check this out. We'll turn off the makeup gain. Uh, we're going to make this 8 to 1, the ratio, and 90 milliseconds for the attack. Now turn the, the threshold all the way down. That's the attack for you. If you start shortening the attack, you're going to get only the click. And if you start lengthening it, you're going to get more than just the attack. So it, you can really tweak this the way you want it. Okay, let's talk about the release now. So the function for the release is to shape the tail of a sound. It basically controls the pumping effect that you hear coming out of a compressor. The release is how long in milliseconds it will take for the compressor to fully release and let go. This can make something sound like it's pumping or you can make it sound pump less or whatever. It's, it's a taste thing. With kick and snare drums, you usually want it to fully release before the next hit so that the attack will re-trigger. Now you can experiment with this and have it the way you want. See, there's no like set rules or anything. So here's the thing with the release. Uh, if you have a long release, your first like snare is going to be punchy and then your second and third won't be punchy at all. Check this out. Right, so the release is just too long in this case. So you just want to have it kind of release. Uh, you can see the gain reduction, which is something I'm going to be talking about in just a second. But kind of get that release in there where it comes back before the next hit. Just general tip about the attack and release, you can make things sound really tight or a bit looser. Okay, so let's talk about the output now. So the function of the output is for level compensation and level matching. When you compress something, the volume is gonna go down. You need to recover that lost volume using the output knob. 
Some compressors have an automatic function like that. It's usually called makeup or auto gain or something like that. But in most cases, you have to do that manually. About level matching and ABing. Be sure to match the output volume to the same level as with no compressor at all. As you guys may know, louder sounds better and you need to be careful not to trick yourself. So once this is done, turn the compressor off, then on again. Just see if you made it better. This is called ABing. It's a very common technique. Do this with everything. EQing, um, you know, compressing, saturating, whatever. Just, you gotta do it. Okay, let's talk about the gain reduction meter now. So this is a very useful tool for using compression. And it's actually a visual, as you can see, right here in this little meter that's the Ableton glue compressor and it's actually gonna give you a visual of how much you're compressing but not only that you're gonna see your attack and release this is gonna be really helpful because at first you'll barely hear the effects of compression so having that visual is really gonna help my average amount of gain reduction is negative 1 to negative 4 DB anything more than that is usually a bigger problem but again it's up to you <laughs> there's no set rules guys I'm looking forward to your questions so please leave those down below and I'll answer them in another video part 2 perhaps I hope you enjoyed the video please leave a comment down below on what I should do next leave a like subscribe and follow me on social media all right guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one take care